Hi, welcome to episode four of River Network's new short series on strategic planning. I'm Hannah Maiko, River Network's Community Organizing Associate. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm joining you from the lands of the Odawa, Ojibwe, and Potawatomi tribes here in current day Grand Rapids, Michigan. I sure hope you've been enjoying all of the episodes so far. In episode one, Brenna reviewed the what and why of strategic planning. In episode two, I dove into hiring consultants. Brenna was back in episode three to discuss considerations for coalitions, networks, and collaboratives undertaking strategic planning. You've successfully made it to the last episode in the series where we'll be talking about keeping your strategic plan relevant after it's been finalized. For those of you not familiar with River Network, we've been building the capacity of local water focused organizations for over 30 years. Our team is comprised of uniquely qualified folks around the country, supporting robust water laws and policy, resilient cities and communities, healthy rivers and agricultural landscapes, and clean, safe, affordable drinking water. We do this in a variety of ways, including strengthening organizations and building the effectiveness of leaders and water champions. Offering trainings such as this short series is just one way that we provide support to our network. One big question that lingers as we approach the end of our strategic planning series, and unfortunately that plagues a lot of organizations who engage in strategic planning, is how to actually use the plan we've invested in creating. It's an all too typical story that organizations will spend months developing a strategic plan, perhaps even with the assistance of a paid consultant as we discussed in episode two, and then the plan sits on a shelf or a page of the website until it's time to start the process over again. The goal of this short episode is to keep that from happening. Strategic plans are meant to be guiding documents that grow and change with your organization, and they can be abundantly useful if you keep them centered in your work. In this episode, we're going to review some ways that your staff and board of directors can keep the strategic plan alive and well over the course of its lifetime, as well as some ongoing activities to make sure you don't neglect it. We'll round out the conversation with a short discussion on how to adjust the plan over time, including if the plan doesn't go as planned. I hope to leave you with some strategies for implementing your strategic plan and consistently revisiting it for guidance. So let's kick things off with an overview of how your strategic plan can guide the organization, and not just once every few years, but consistently over time. While working on your strategic plan, you will engage people internal to your organization as well as external stakeholders. This is going to result in a wide array of ideas and priorities emerging, and the final plan will consist of a number of goals and long-term visioning strategies to address emergent themes. Once the plan is finalized, it's a great tool for putting together an organizational work plan. An org-wide work plan will address how specific parts of your mission will be accomplished, both by board members and staff or volunteers. Oftentimes, it's best for an organizational work plan to be structured around your fiscal year and address the next 12 months. This might be the calendar year for your organization or whatever the fiscal year is that's outlined in your bylaws. Oftentimes, organizational work plans are sorted programmatically or by large key issue areas. Making sure the work plan has goals for both the board of directors and the staff ensures that the burdens of meeting the strategic plan's outcomes are shared. An organizational work plan is a great starting point for crafting individual work plans for staff. Individual work plans will mirror the same timeline as the org-wide work plan, but will be far more specific with individual staff members' goals, grants, deliverables, and sometimes even time allocations. These plans are useful for keeping the big picture in focus throughout the course of the year and making sure staff activities are aligned with the original strategic plan. As individual goals are met and organizational goals are met, you can measure metrics against the outcomes listed in your strategic plan. You'll of course revisit organizational work plans and individual work plans every 12 months throughout the life of your strategic plan being sure to spread out activities to achieve your outcomes and adding new opportunities in as they become available and accessible. Of course, things don't always go as planned, so taking some time to adjust, updating individual and organizational work plans, and altering the outcomes of your strategic plan to reflect your circumstances is critical for managing expectations and workloads. We'll touch on that again a little bit later. 
Speaking of work planning though, I think it's really important to give a few examples of how a strategic planning outcome might translate into a work plan. In this first example, we're starting with the overarching goal of expanding outreach, which came directly from your organization's recently completed strategic plan. Knowing that this is a shared duty of the staff and the board of directors, we can translate, translate that into specific tactics for each group. These tactics would show up in the organizational work plan. From there, individual activities can be identified for staff members or board members to undertake. These activities show up in individual work plans. I will note that it's not common for board members to have individual work plans, just the organization's staff members. So board activities might be added to the board's general annual work plan or uh, fleshed out in board committees and committee work plans. So in this example of expanding outreach, the board is choosing to pursue diversifying the makeup of their members as their tactic from the organizational work plan. And then they're utilizing the activities of EDI training as well as a new recruitment strategy, which are items that would show up in the board's work plan or a committee work plan. Staff, however, are choosing to look at planning their programming to be more intersectional to meet this goal. That would show up in the organizational work plan. And then the staff are going to carry out activities such as partnering with a local housing organization and hosting a community forum. And those items would show up in individual work plans. As a second example related to the strategic planning outcome of better financial management, um, we are going to outline similar breakdowns of tactics and strategies to make progress towards the overall goal. In this example, the organizational work plan would outline that the board should strengthen its finance committee, whereas the staff would implement some new financial tracking procedures. In the board's work plan, it's outlined to review and update financial controls, and then to update the job description for and recruit a new treasurer. In the individual staff work plans, standardizing a new budget versus actuals template or BVA template for all program staff and adding financial updates to recurring staff meetings are items that might show up. So these are both um, super simple examples of how a goal can be translated into tactics at the organizational work plan level. And then how those can be broken down into individual activities, which would show up in either board or staff work plans. There are a number of ongoing activities to ensure that the strategic plan remains in central focus over its lifetime, in addition to the conversation we just had about work planning. Building discussions about the plan into recurring meetings, orientation processes, and metric tracking for individual grants or programs are all sure ways to keep the plan relevant. Firstly, orientation for both board and staff members should always include a review of the strategic plan. Things to include might be what has already been accomplished in the current strategic plan, what year or milestone you're at in the current plan, and what are the staff or board members new role would contribute to meeting outcomes stated in the plan. This tactic also holds current staff and board members accountable for being aware of progress and the plan's overall goals. Secondly, staff meetings and board meetings can benefit from a quarterly check-in with the strategic plan. Good questions to ask here uh, might be, what have we accomplished in the last three months? Are we on track to complete a goal by the end of the year? Or maybe, are there any new opportunities we should add to work plans that would help meet a strategic planning outcome? These check-ins can ensure that everything is on track and running smoothly, or alternately, they might reveal that the organization is straying away from the strategic plan and needs to refocus. The third recommendation is to incorporate the strategic plan's outcomes into regular metric tracking. If your day-to-day -day programs and operations include tracking qualitative or quantitative data for grants, funders, or annual reporting, take note of how those data points can inform your progress on your strategic plan's outcomes. Alternately, what additional data points would be easy to add to your regular tracking that might better inform progress on the strategic plan? On an ongoing basis, the staff and board should be informing each other of their progress. Staff updates should make quarterly or maybe twice annual appearances at board meetings, and board updates should be communicated to the staff with the same frequency. This allows everyone to feel informed 
It helps folks understand their roles regarding the strategic plan, and it also creates a healthy system of accountability. While we can try as we might to stick to our plans and keep them relevant, sometimes surprises come up. Staff and board turnover, changes in funding, policy changes, emerging crises, and new opportunities can alter an organization's ability to carry out their strategic plan, both for better and for worse. The most important thing to acknowledge is that your strategic plan is meant to grow and change with your organization. While minor shifts in programming and day-to-day -day operations aren't caused to alter the plan, larger changes in your mission or emerging issues affecting your ability to carry it out definitely are. With that being said, going back in to update outcomes and change metrics to reflect your current situation is highly recommended. There is no shame in realizing your organization's capacity has changed or priorities have shifted with the community you serve. Altering course to shoot for more accessible and achievable outcomes and managing expectations to relieve burdens on staff and board members is much better than pushing through with a plan that is going to burn folks out or leave your organization in a deficit. Take time to pause using those quarterly check-ins we talked about earlier to evaluate the successes you've had and make sure what's ahead is still manageable and realistic. Actions following those discussions might include changing individual or organizational work plans or shifting a specific metric related to a strategic planning outcome. It's also reasonable to pause your strategic plan if there's a major upset to your organization's functioning, like let's say maybe a global pandemic. At this point, shifting to a more responsive activity or a set of responsive activities with the understanding that you'll pick back up when you're able to is a super reasonable decision. As we wrap up episode four, I want to leave you with one final thought. If you take anything away from this episode, let it be this. While having a professionally designed, very pretty public facing document is great, um, it's much better to have a document that is flexible and functional for your team. We definitely want a practical plan and one that grows and changes with your organization. Well, you have made it. This is the last episode in our strategic planning series, totaling less than one hour to get through all of the building blocks of the strategic planning process. Next steps for you and your team might include sitting down to evaluate your own capacity to start your next or your first strategic plan. If you find that you could use some help, please know that River Network is here to assist and we offer a number of ways to make consulting more affordable and accessible for organizations of any size. Myself and Brenna are available to answer questions. Um, have follow-up discussions based on this training and also to help develop scopes of work to meet your organization's strategic planning needs. So with that, I will close out and thank you for coming along on this journey. For more information, please check out rivernetwork.org and always feel welcome to reach out to our staff for additional information.